We now learn about vectors. A vector is a quantity which is defined both by its size, also known as magnitude, as well as its direction. And here's an example. The vector a, which I write as a with an arrow on top of it, which equals to 3, 4. Now, these two numbers, 3 and 4, are known as the x and y components, sometimes called x and y coordinates, of this vector. And what this x and this y component allow me to do is draw the vector a. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use the grid that I have on the right-hand side of the page here. And starting from absolutely any point on the grid, say this point that I've just added in red here, this x component of 3 is telling me to move 3 units to the right. So starting from that red point, that's 1, 2, and 3. And then this y component 4 is telling me to move 4 units upwards. So that's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And vector a is the arrow joining the starting point to the finish point, like so. And we should always label the vector by its name, so in this case, a. Now remember, at the beginning of this tutorial, I said that a vector was a quantity defined both by its size as well as a direction. Indeed, looking at this red arrow here, we can see that it's definitely pointing in a certain direction. Furthermore, we can also see that this vector definitely has a size. Indeed, we can see that this vector has a length which is called the magnitude of the vector, and we'll soon be learning how to calculate that. Now, vectors are used to describe many different things. For instance, this vector A could very well describe the force with which we kick into a football, in which case the direction of the vector would show the direction in which we kick the ball, and the length of the vector would represent the force or strength with which we kick the ball. Or more simply, this vector A could represent the displacement we'd have to follow to get from a point A to a point B. In which case, the length of the vector would simply equal to the distance separating those two points. Another example of a vector could be this vector B, which equals to negative 2, 3. And once more, we can draw this vector on the grid that we have here. So, starting from absolutely any point on the grid, for example, this blue point here. To draw vector b, we need to move two units to the left, because it's negative, and three units upwards. So starting from that blue point, that's two units to the left, one, and two, and three units upwards. One, two, and three. The vector b is then this blue arrow joining the starting point to our finish point, like so. And again, I label this vector by its name. Let me add one last thing. Both of these vectors were written as column vectors. In other words, the x and y components of the vectors were written as a column. At times, we may encounter a slightly different notation, and that is to write a vector as a row vector. And for vector a, that would look like this. Vector a equals to 3, 4. Now, just to be clear, both of these notations mean the same thing. The notation we have in blue is a column vector, and the notation in gray is a row vector. And in this course, we'll mainly be using the column vector notation. Okay, so we now know what a vector is, we know about its x and y components, and we also know how to draw a vector. In our next tutorial, we'll be learning how to find a vector's components directly from a drawn vector. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.